Tick tock. Tick tock. We await the decision from Aaron Rodgers as we try and parse through the latest reporting around his future, Devontae Adams, and Green Bay's plans for this offseason. You are locked on Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet, and the show for fans who know what happened. They want to know why and how. A lot of reporting around the Green Bay Packers' future came out over the weekend, and let me preface this all with the following. I understand you've grown tired of this story. I have grown tired of this story. And there are plenty of fans who, rather than listen to the reporting, would just like to say, until I hear it from Aaron Rodgers, I'm not going to believe it. I don't think that's useful, um, not the least of which because Aaron's version of this is still going to be the one that is most advantageous to Aaron personally, Um, just like the Packers version of this is going to be the version that is most advantageous to that franchise. I think we have to be able to read between the lines and we have to be able to take good reporting from people we trust and try and figure out what's going on. I think that's actually very important that we do that. It's why I have a podcast to talk about that kind of stuff. And that's why you listen, theoretically. So let's dig into the meat of this. Jeremy Fowler and Dan Graziano over at ESPN published a long piece full of reporting on what they're hearing with the latest from Aaron Rodgers. And it should not be a surprise that we're getting some movement on this, not because of anything that has really changed with the decision making, but the combine was in Indianapolis over the weekend. A lot of decision makers were there. People like Brian Gutekinds and Mark Murphy. People like, uh, you know, the the brain trusts in Denver. I don't know if John Elway was there, and I don't know how involved John Elway is in the process anymore. But. There's also a lot of journalists there, so this information is going to be maybe more readily available than it would be otherwise. Also, the deadline to tag Devontae Adams has essentially reached us. It is now or never for the Green Bay Packers. March 8th. What's the date today? The 7th. So we need a decision ASAP. ASAP, like today or tomorrow. That's what the Packers need. In this piece, in tandem with the reporting that has come out from Ian Rappaport, it is sounding like the options are stay in Green Bay, whatever that looks like, whether it's a restructured contract, whether it's an extension. Um, Both the Rappaport and ESPN reporting suggests extension, Although ESPN suggests it could be three, four years rather than just a short-term deal, a one- or a two-year deal for Aaron Rodgers um, to spread out some of that money. Now, that could mean a two-year deal that's got two years of void money to spread out the, the guaranteed money that you're getting. It's Green Bay or Denver. Now, I want to get to the Denver part of this in a second. The, the reporting has been from both ESPN and NFL Network that Rodgers would become the highest paid player in the league on this deal. And that trade compensation for the Packers is going to be a group, several premium picks and a young player or two. Good young player. It's also been reported and was reported in this piece, in fact, that Denver might not be willing to pay the price, may not be willing to pay the asking price 
for Aaron Rodgers. That seems pretty unlikely. That seems like it is media negotiation. That leads me to where I have been for the last 18 months. What is the motivation for leaving? What is it about Denver that is so appealing relative to Green Bay? Why go now? I I still do not have an answer for that. So that leads us to an important question. What does Aaron Rodgers want at this point? What is he looking for? What is he not getting in Green Bay that he thinks he could get in Denver? What has made this decision from where you have someone like Ian Rappaport reporting for weeks, things are in a good place, the Packers are optimistic that they can get this done to. Rodgers is generally and, and genuinely torn about his future, about his decision, about what he's going to do. How do you get to that place? That seems a little bit strange to me. And to some degree leads me to believe that this is all some posturing, that this all gets worked out, that whatever Rodgers is trying to negotiate, trying to leverage here, they come to some agreement on and Rodgers and Adams are going to be back. That is what I think is going to happen. And part of the reason I think that is because no other decision makes sense to me. Now, it's not my decision, but here's here's what Aaron Rodgers laid out on the record. For those of you saying, I want to hear Aaron Rodgers say, okay, here's what Aaron Rodgers said on the record in a press conference in July. And has has said a number of times over the last two or three years. He wants input on decisions that directly affect his job. According to Aaron Rodgers, that has happened. That he has been in on those conversations. He's grateful for those conversations. And that he is happy with his relationship with the front office. Happy that there is a change that has been made. He wanted input on free agents that were going to stay or go. With the direction of the team reflected usually as veterans, leadership, all that stuff. Well, Aaron Rodgers stayed around. He heard the Packers' plan. They had discussions about the future. All of the things that he asked for, a a, a contract. Remember he said in July that he felt like he was being made to be a lame duck even though financially it never made sense for them to have moved on after the 2020 season because he didn't feel like the team was offering him uh, longer-term security, that they didn't go to him and say, this is what we want to do, we want to extend you, we want to make you the highest-paid player in the league again. That he felt like he was not getting the assurances that he's wanted. All the reports suggest Green Bay intends to make him the highest paid player in the league. That that's the deal that's been negotiated. And and Rappaport all but made it seem like the the deal is done. Rodgers just has to sign it when and if he decides to come back. Or or very, very close to being done. And, And my guess is a lot of this is posturing to get you know, the Randall Cobb trades of the world, those kinds of things done. Or to get Devontae Adams something. We'll get to the Devontae Adams of this all coming up in a second. So if if all of those needs have been met, what is the beef? What are we waiting for? What, 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 what? We need some clarity on that. And, and, and look, I don't I don't begrudge Rodgers feeling like it's time to go. If that's what he wants to do, great. I want to hear the explanation for why. Because it's not a better team. It's not a better roster. Less proven coaching staff, all young coaches. Much more difficult division. Much more difficult conference. Much harder path to the Super Bowl. And guess what? The easy path or the easier path the last few years has not proven successful for Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Now, maybe that's reason enough for him to just say, I got to try something else. But it also feels like the prudent reasoning to say, 
I'm going to stay and figure this out. And because this is the best, the best chance that I have to get the storybook ending that I want. Is he going to do that? I don't know, but we're going to find out soon because this decision essentially has to be made today or tomorrow. That's it. It has to be made today or tomorrow because Green Bay has to know what they're going to do with Devontae Adams. The expectation is he's going to get the tag and that they're going to work out a long-term deal eventually. Devontae Adams does not want to play on the tag. He's made that abundantly clear. So how do they figure this all out? We're going to find that out. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Built Bar. Have you tried the Built Puffs? These things have changed the protein bar game. Protein-infused marshmallows. Protein-infused marshmallow. One more time. Protein-infused marshmallow. They're fluffy. You get the crunch from the chocolate. And they are just like the rest of their line. High in fiber, high in protein, low in net carbs, low in sugar. Yet they taste amazing. Churro. Coconut marshmallow. That's my go-to. Banana cream pie. Come on. Those flavors just sound delicious. Go to Built.com and scroll through everything. All the options. And if you don't believe me about the macros, check them out. Check them out. Most Built Bars, 130 calories, but 4 grams of sugar, 4 grams of net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. It will blow your mind how good they taste with that profile. And I can incentivize you to try it. I can. I can make it easier for you. Use the promo code LOCKED15. Go to Built.com to get 15% off your next order. That's LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen of the day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. All right, let's get to the Devontae Adams of it all. The expectation, according to this ESPN report, is that Devontae Adams will be tagged. A long-term contract will likely not be worked out in time. For all of this to be worked out. If Aaron Rodgers is coming back. That makes it a lot easier. To make the money work. According to Aaron Wilson. uh, Over at uh, Pro Football Network. The Packers are expected to release. Sedarius Smith. Which clears up about 15 million. There is multiple reports. Aaron Nagler was was first. uh, And then NFL Network. uh, Tagged in. uh, that, That an extension with for Jair Alexander is in the works. These are decisions that we expected to be coming. We'll talk about the Zadaria Smith thing at the end of the show. If Devontae is getting tagged, then that gives the Packers an opportunity, a window to get a long-term deal done. Here's where this gets complicated, and this is is something we've talked about over the last couple weeks. If Rodgers is waiting for Adams... And, and saying to the Packers, you need to get this done. The problem with that is they need to know the deal with Rodgers. For sure. Because that could change the way that they handle Devontae Adams. We know that. Now, they have said our decision to keep Devontae Adams is irrespective of Aaron Rodgers. We've talked about why that's probably just number one, not true. And, and number two, uh, silly. Of course it matters. Of course it matters. But it could be the other way around as well. Adams could be waiting to hear from Aaron Rodgers. Look, I'm not signing a contract if I don't know who the quarterback is. Because it may be more expensive to stay here if I got to catch passes from Jordan Love. That's not to say I won't stay. But I may add some, some dollars to my price Whereas if it's Aaron Rodgers, you know, the price may be something else. Now, he's not he's not taking any discounts. I, I talked to a, a league source about this the other day. He's not taking any discounts. He's going to get the max. Now, the question is, what does that look like? He's not, I don't think he's going to play. He, doesn't, he certainly does not want to play on the tag either. So, 
either it is it is tag and trade season or it is long-term deal season. Now, what is the order of operations here? Are we going to get a, a, a Rodgers announcement before we get a Devontae Adams announcement? And how close are the Packers? We have no idea. We have no idea how close the Packers are to an agreement with Devontae Adams outside of they've had some discussions. There have been some reporting that they're they're not they're not near a deal, but we don't know what that means. Action spur deadlines. Especially if let's say Aaron Rodgers is saying, hey, look, this is what this is what I want to do. The tag deadline could spur some action. I mean, there's a lot that could happen in here. Now, related to all of this is in that ESPN report, and this makes sense, the Packers apparently have two plans. One is for Rodgers comes back, and one is for Rodgers leaves. Those are are importantly different. The, the amount of money, first of all, is probably going to be different. They're going to have an extra five, eight, ten million $10 million if he's traded versus what he's likely going to come back on and count on the cap in 2022. But again, it affects Devontae Adams and it affects the desirability of this team. It affects the way that they are competing in the NFC such that you believe they are. I I think the Packers will continue to believe that they can compete. But maybe you need to be a little bit more aggressive in shedding salary so you can take on some salary. Or maybe you need to be a little bit more aggressive in you know, adding void years or creating extensions or restructuring whatever you need to do to create some more money to go out and sign a Von Miller. Aaron Wilson also reported that the Packers are interested in Von Miller. Now, interested in, you know, that's a a vague term. I'm sure Brian Gutekinds would love Von Miller. They have no way to sign him if he's going to get what it's reported that he could still be worth on the open market. If he's still going to get 15 to 20 million, there's just that's that becomes untenable unless he's your Devontae Adams replacement. It becomes really hard to pay both of them. So, you know, Brian Gutekind said Aaron Rodgers is the first domino. It's really that that Aaron Rodgers is the domino. And everything else after that flows from it. In that Your whole franchise is different. Yeah, they want to compete. They want to do all this stuff. I get it. He has to say that, and and it's a great line. We're the Green Bay Packers. Love that, right? But you you play in free agency different. Our team's going to want to, is someone going to want to come and take a weirdly structured deal or less money to come to Green Bay? Whitney Merciless presumably comes to Green Bay because of Aaron Rodgers. You have these, Randall Cobb is only in Green Bay because of Aaron Rodgers. Now that was a trade, different situation. But you have to believe there are vet minimum guys who would pick Green Bay over some other place who they could end up being useful players for you that all of a sudden you're not getting without Rodgers. So Devondre Campbell is apparently the, the top priority after this. You get those things worked out, and then you try and figure out what you can do with Devondre Campbell. Hey, guess what? If the Packers figure out a, a, an extension with Devontae Adams, maybe Campbell gets the tag. I doubt it. I doubt it. But he could. Transition tag? I don't know. That's still a lot of money. 14 plus million. I think that I think the Packers would like to avoid doing that. But they also have... They don't have the same deadline for Campbell because... They're probably not going to tag him and they have the extra week before he hits the open market to get a deal done with him. That could be something that they've already worked on. Hey, this is what we're thinking. This is what we're looking at. What do you think? This cascading effect is, I mean, it's momentous. It is, it is everything about the future of this franchise boiled down to the next 24 to 48 hours. I mean, we're going to know. We're going to know soon. And yes, there will be an emergency podcast. We're going to know very, very, very soon. And I'm hoping I'm hoping we have some answers for what's going on and what took so long. And it's not so long, but but we're gonna, we're up against the deadline now. 
And as, as was mentioned in the ESPN article, much longer and it starts to look bad for everyone. So this, this decision is coming. Um, and, and because the Packers have to figure out what they're going to do, they have to figure out what they're going to do. So I'm, I'm fascinated to hear, we're going to get the reporting on, on how this all went down, why this all went down and, and what, what led to what. I don't know if it'll be now. I don't know if it'll be in a week. I don't know if it'll be in a month or six months. It might be in five years. Here's what we know. Aaron Rodgers officiated David Bakhtiari's wedding over the weekend. Um, That's it. (laughs) Right now, that's it. That's it. And that the Packers have until tomorrow to tag Devontae Adams. That's what we know. That's what we know for sure. That is, it's not a lot. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Football might be over, but basketball is in full steam for both pro and college hoops. From the latest odds, tools, player performance props to where the next coach fired is going to land, Bet Online is your number one spot for all your sports betting needs. Bet Online remains your best spot for sports scores, podcasts, and news this season, not just basketball. Bet Online has hockey, boxing, UFC, golf, all kinds of great stuff. Head to the website or use your mobile device today to learn about the trends and actions. Bet Online, where the game starts. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. Now go make your second listen, Locked On NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Rocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. I mentioned the Aaron Wilson report on Zadarius Smith. It's not exactly a shocking report. The Packers are expected to cut Zadarius Smith. Now what? Now what? Because you can't move on from Z and Preston. Just can't. They do not have the bodies on the edge. And we saw it in the playoff game. When they had Preston and Rashawn Gary at this level, this version of Rashawn Gary, and Zadarius all on the field at once. It was a nightmare. Add in Kenny Clark. And Dean Lowry, who had a nice season. We'll see if he's back. Doesn't seem like they're they're making as many moves as, as maybe we thought they were. To restructure some of these deals. But we'll see. They, they, we know they have more to come. If they're going to cut Zadarius Smith, now it becomes essential. And, and we talked about this on the Leap Newsletter Today, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. The free newsletter on Mondays. Go check it out. And and Jason and I answered the question, who do you think is the most important guy to sign or extend or restructure after we figure out what happens with, with 12 and 17? And my answer was Preston Smith. Because we assume Zedaria Smith is gone. And, and although Devondre Campbell was a better player in 2021, than Preston Smith. Preston Smith is more valuable to the team because they do not have anyone to approximate his production. Now you're losing Z. You can't lose Preston too. Just can't. They don't. Jonathan Garvin is not good enough right now. We have not seen enough from him to think that this defense wouldn't take a big step back if it's just Gary and some guys. Now this is a good draft. For, for pass rushers, there's there's some nice edge guys in the, in the mix. There's some really good interior defensive guys who could be available for, for Green Bay in the, in the top 100, some premium type position players. But there, you just, you can't replace the value of having a quality guy on the edge. He's not a game changer. He's just a, a consistent, quality, solid dude. And, and those are valuable. A quality edge is just more impactful than a really good stack linebacker. It just is. And even even the top guys, I mean, look at look at Darius Leonard. Colts didn't even make the playoffs. Defense was fine. It was pretty good. 49ers defense with Fred Werner. It was really good. And Fred Werner is a big reason why. But it's really all about the pass rush. When they didn't have their Haas pass rushers, that defense wasn't nearly as good. When they had injuries in the secondary, that defense wasn't nearly as good. 
it, it just affects the game more. Unless you have one of those just just top, top, top tier. And even then, I'm not paying them. I mean, they're, they're getting like starting quarterback money. Can't do that. Now, I don't know what the price tag is going to be for, for Devondre Campbell. That's part of this too. Because if, if you can get him six, seven, eight million dollars a year, Preston's probably going to cost more than that. Maybe you make the argument that way. I think Preston Smith is it becomes even more vital now because you need to have two guys that you trust. Preston Smith doesn't miss games. You just know 91 is going to be out there. That is so valuable for your defense. And to have two guys on the edge and one guy in the middle that you know are going to be awesome. To go with two safeties you really like. Two corners at least that you really like. And now to have two edge rushers, that is the foundation of a good defense. And if this team can be healthy, they can get everything moving in the right direction. That way you have to now, if you're going to cut Sedaria Smith, and I get it, you have to find a way to keep Preston Smith, to extend him, to do whatever it is that you have to do to get that worked out, assuming that that you want to be a good defense in 2022, and presumably they do. So every every move has a corresponding move in a way because if you lose a guy at a spot, you need to find a way to replace that production. Now, the Packers didn't get production from Zadarius Smith this past year. But they can't lose Preston and Zedarius. Can't lose both Smith brothers. You need at least one Smith brother. Or this this just gets untenable defensively. It just becomes really, really hard to play defense that way. And and Green Bay can't. Green Bay can't. They just don't have they don't have the bodies. They don't have the interior defensive presence. Rashawn Gary can't do it by himself. No one can. No pass rusher in the league can do it totally by themselves. You still need the guys around you to finish. Like Aaron Donald is incredible. He makes life easier for Leonard Floyd. Makes life easier for Von Miller. Those are good players. But he makes life easier for them. And now you take a good player and they can produce at great levels. That's what what you have. They're, They're force multipliers. Rashawn Gary can be a force multiplier. Kenny Clark is a lesser version of a force multiplier in that way. Because he demands so much attention. Well, if you if you know, okay, you got a chip 52, that means you've got 91 singled up. And if that guy is is going to win his battle way more than anyone else you have, then you need to find a way to pay that guy and figure out how to bring him back so that this team has a chance next year. You can't be counting on a rookie, bargain basement deals. No, you can't take that big a step back defensively if you're going to move on from Zadarius and Preston. It's just too big a gap. And they can do it. They can do it. I expect them to do it. We'll see if they do it. There will be an emergency podcast if we get an Aaron Rodgers decision. Um, Expect that in the feed this week. I I think it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen Tuesday. Um, So I'll have to do another one of these where I'm just like, yeah, well, so now what? I'm sorry about that. That's the reality of the situation that we are in. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to hit us up on the Locked on Packers fan hotline, you can do that, 920-341-3775 to stay Locked on Packers.